What is the state of Western democracy in Africa? Is it working? Has it solved any problem? Is it the way to go? Or is it time that Africans must fashion out a system that is adapted to their own situations, their own environment, and their own experiences? Very, very hot topic. And we will listen in to the opinion of an African who is supposed to know, a former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the person of Olusegun Obasanjo. He has been a democratic leader in Nigeria for eight good years, finished, handed over to another government, and went into retirement. Before then, he was also president of Nigeria as a military head of state. So, combining military experience and democratic experience, he's probably one of the best persons in Africa to offer insight into what democracy is doing in Africa or not doing. We will explore this topic using some of his statements, but we urge you please to hit the like button for this video, subscribe to our channel because we go deep and give objective insights into African affairs. Now, let's go. First of all, he made a very strong assertion. Obasan just said that Western liberal democracy has not been a system of government in Africa because it was forced on the continent by the colonialists. He made that assertion in his hometown, Abiokuta in Nigeria, when he delivered a keynote address at an high-level consultation on rethinking Western liberal democracy for Africa, held at Olusegu Abasanjo Presidential Library in the state. That event attracted a lot of governors from Nigeria, a lot of intellectuals, government ministers, and the rest of them. And the discussion kicked off. Obasanjo noted that liberal democracy is a government of a few people over all the people or population. And these few people are representatives of only some of the people and not full representation of all the people. Wow, this is job-breaking and mouth-filling. Basically, a few individuals are elected by a few people and they rule over the rest who maybe have no inkling or contribution to their coming to power. According to Abbasanjo, African countries have no business at all operating a system of government which they did not have hands in its definition and design. The weakness and failure of liberal democracy as it is practiced stem from its history, content, and context, and its practice, Obasanjo said. Now, this is a lot that we need to break them down, but let's hear more from him before we delve into the analysis. He said, in short, we have a system of government in which we have no hands to define and design, and we continue with it, even when we know that it is not working for us. Those who brought it to us are now questioning the rightness of their invention, its deliverability, and its relevance today without reform. The essence of any system of government is the welfare and well-being of the people, all the people, not some. Here, we must interrogate performance of democracy in the West where it originated from, and with us, the inheritors of what we are left with by our colonial powers. Very interesting question and aspect to this. Is it not time for Africans to begin to question this Western liberal democracy? It's not a value judgment whether democracy is good or bad. No. Obviously, democracy is good when the people can actually make input to who governs them. 
make input to how they are governed. But in a situation where people probably, for example, that of what happens in many African countries, people cast their vote for Mr. A, hoping that Mr. A will become their leader. But the politicians in their deft maneuvers configures the system in one way or the other to say that it was Mr. B instead of A that the people voted for who have won the election. You can call it election rigging. You can call it election manipulation. You can call it anything. But the examples litter the countries of Africa. Western democracy, when you have an election, credible election, somebody who wins takes over. In Africa, once a sitting president is in power, to win against him, no matter what you do, is almost an impossible task. When it happens in Africa, it's like a record, and the people should be uh, uh, recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records. As happened in Nigeria when one good luck Jonathan Ebele, Ebele Jonathan handed power, lost the election while in his second attempt, and he handed over to somebody. It happened in Ghana, and now recently just happened in uh, Liberia. But in all the other countries, no. The sitting president must win by all means. Even opposition candidates can be jailed if they think that they have the clout to offer credible challenge. They jail them, cook up stories, and get them jailed. In Congo, election is going to happen next month. One of the contenders is somebody very popular. He was jailed during the time of Joseph Kabila on Trump top charges because he was challenging him. Today, that jail term has been rubbish because he's free to contest in the election right now. So there are so many manipulations. How do you even explain that a president comes in using a constitution that he says that he can stay there for two terms? After the first term, in the middle of the second term, they will change the constitution to make it possible for them to go for a third, fourth, fifth, the little Africa. And each election, they win. Their winning margin is 99%. Wow. And what happens? After that, the military steps in. So the Western liberal democracy is not working. Most of the countries, they generate billions of dollars. But you don't see the dividend on the people. The people in government, they stash the money away in foreign banks, live like uh, in El Dorado, and the people continue to suffer. It's proper question to ask. Since the 60s, most African countries got independence. They have this democratic system running. How is the development in African countries? In the go-to countries, in the U.S., the president is known as Judge Biden or Judge Bush or Joseph Biden. In Africa, they will know the president. They will have office for the wife of the president, spending billions to keep that. So, so many things need to be changed if Africa really have to practice this liberal democracy. It looks like we are not really matured. And that's why the military keep knocking on the doors of so many countries. And the worst we keep selling, telling you, oh, go on democracy, democracy, democracy. But when the people who are elected go wrong, they find it hard to tell them because they want to protect their national interest and keep puppet regimes in Africa. 
And when the military strikes, they get angry, they start complaining, they are imposing sanctions and the rest of them. But the democracy you brought is not being practiced the way you is supposed to be, and you don't say anything. I'm, I have nothing against democracy, and I believe also most Africans or the likes of Obasanjo, but the way it is being practiced in Africa cannot lead Africa out of the poverty, out of the development difficulties that they are facing. Something has to give. So this is a right time to ask questions and see if there are ways that these could be changed. Please hit the like button for this video and don't forget to subscribe and go to the comment section and tell us what you think about this. We will see you in our next update.